Are you a musician currently in a band that just feels like it's stuck? Like it doesn't matter how hard you try, the rest of the group just isn't interested in changing anything? Don't take this the wrong way, but you may be the problem. Hi, my name is Adam. I'm a musician and content creator. My goal is to help you make good money playing music. If that sounds good to you, please subscribe to the channel and ring the bell so you don't miss anything. For the past few years, I have made content for a very specific type of musician. Musicians with drive and ambition. Folks who are motivated to use their talents to succeed and grow and build the careers that they've always dreamed of. And in past videos and podcast episodes, I've said that people who aren't interested in those things are a hindrance and doomed to mediocrity. And for the most part, that is still true but I feel like recently my views have slightly shifted on this topic. Recently on Reddit and the CBC Facebook group, there have been stories shared by guys in our community who are in the situation that I described earlier. They feel like they're stuck in these dead end bands and it doesn't matter how hard they try to make things better, the rest of the group is working just as hard to keep things the same. Now I've referred to those projects in the past as man cave bands. My definition of a man cave band is a group that kind of takes the role of poker night for musicians. There really is no end goal past getting together and playing. Getting together and playing is the goal itself. You know, just make music with your friends and have fun. This particular scene from Freaks and Geeks comes to mind. Okay, so let's say you answer a Craigslist or a Facebook ad for a local band that's looking for a new guitar player. They play the kind of music that you're into, but don't necessarily play out as much as you'd like. You nail the audition, and you join the group. And with your fresh perspective, you see some things that they can tweak in order to potentially get more gigs. Maybe play bigger and better venues. Maybe make bigger and better money. But you start suggesting those things and immediately get shot down by the majority of the group. This could be a super frustrating situation to find yourself in, but here's the thing. If there are five members of a band and four of those members are in the exact group they wanna be in, the issue isn't them, it's you. Look. Bands are a partnership of mutual consent. They're a group of people who all agree to work in some capacity towards a common goal. In order for any project to succeed though, everybody needs to be on the same page. When there's no clear direction or intentions aren't communicated clearly, these kind of lopsided arguments start to occur. Now I'm not saying you should stop suggesting things that could potentially make your band better, but don't go into a situation that's already established thinking that you know the best thing for everybody else. So if you're looking to start a new project, take some time to really think about what your goals are. If you're a musician looking to join a band, do the same thing and make sure that you communicate those goals to whatever prospective group you're looking to join. If your goals don't line up with theirs, you should probably look for another group. And if you're already in a band that isn't going the direction you want to go, quit. Seriously, just quit. It doesn't have to be this big dramatic thing. You would be happier joining a group that wants to work hard and do bigger and better things. And they're going to be much happier to find another bass player who's not going to rock the boat constantly. Here's a fun story that involves one of the biggest music YouTubers on the planet. When I moved back to Atlanta from Nashville, I got a gig playing guitar for a local singer songwriter. This was a pop gig, but I was a punk rock kid who wanted to jump off drum risers and do guitar windmills all night. But the material was really, really good and he had just finished recording an album that was produced by Rick Beato. Yes, that Rick Beato. So I played with this artist for about a year, did some showcases, had a meeting with BMI, and for the most part, did my best to do a good job. But I was also trying to insert more of my personality into the project, and at times I was definitely guilty of upstaging the main guy. After some time though, the artist called me up and told me that he was letting me go. His words were he was freeing me up to do something that was gonna make me happy and fulfill me artistically. And I was furious. To me, this felt like a personal attack. I had learned the parts, I would played the gigs, I had fulfilled my duty on paper, all to be fired over the phone? And besides, who could they possibly replace me with? The answer, Stevie T. Just kidding. So fast forward a year or so. I'd gotten a gig with an original pop punk group that was doing some pretty cool things. And wouldn't you know it, we actually got booked to do a show where my former boss was also on the lineup. His band sounded awesome, and in that moment, I realized that he was absolutely right. In reality, it wasn't a great fit, and we were both better off. With that being said, there's another part of this situation that I think a lot of us miss. As professional musicians, it can be easy to forget that playing music is a hobby for the majority of the population. For thousands Thousands of musicians playing a show for the bar tab is the end goal. Anything else is just icing on the cake. And this may be a controversial take, but I don't think we should begrudge those players for feeling that way. Just as they shouldn't begrudge us for wanting to make solid money playing our instruments. The debate about gigs that only pay a hundred bucks a man is a valid one, but 
in reality, they're never going away. And there's always going to be a population of musicians who will take them. Hell, they may even be grateful for them. You can either shake your fist at those players for lowering the value of live entertainment in your market, or you can use that ambition and drive that I talked about earlier to build something truly great and set your own prices. Which of those two paths do you think would benefit you more? Have you ever been in a band situation like I described? Leave a comment and let me know. That's going to do it for this week. Thanks again for tuning in. If you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. We post new videos here every single Friday. Also, if leveling up your band is one of your main goals, check out my blank contract and writer packages. These are the same documents that my band uses when we book private events, and it'll give your band the same foundation that you'll need when you get the opportunity to play these kinds of shows. The link for that's going to be in the description. Take care, and I'll see you next time.